The Russian invasion of Ukraine is more than just a localized conflict between two European countries. This has the potential to have deep impacts here in the U.S. and could affect retirees and Social Security disproportionately. In today's video, I'm going to break this down and tell you what to watch for as this continues to unfold. But before we get into it, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit that notifications bell. The next few years are going to be dynamic for the Social Security system, and as things change, I'll be right here talking about it. And if you're subscribed with notifications on, you won't miss it. The Russian invasion of Ukraine brings back a lot of memories for those of us who grew up during the Cold War. I can clearly remember huddling under my third grade school desk and duck and cover drills and the early childhood anxiety from thinking that my very life dangled on a rapidly fraying nuclear cord. And now that Putin, along with his nuclear arsenal, has invaded Ukraine, what's next? Is he going to continue to try to rebuild the Soviet empire to its former glory and take back over the Baltic states? Those states are members of NATO, and that may pull the U.S. into the conflict in a much larger way than economic sanctions. That's a very real threat, but the stock market has largely shrugged this off. Since the day of the invasion to the day I'm recording this, the S&P is up more than 5%. So this means that everything must be okay, right? Well, no. This conflict has the potential to have far-reaching impacts that, again, could disproportionately affect retirees through the health and longevity of the Social Security system. The primary cause of these impacts will be inflation. Russia's invasion of Ukraine couldn't come at a worse time for the U.S. economy. We're already feeling the effects of the pandemic-induced inflation, and this conflict may have accelerated the rising prices. The first place we're going to all feel this is at the gas pump, and we already are. But some experts are calling for the average price of gas to hit $5 or more per gallon. And that's not just out in California. That's across the U.S. But this certainly won't be the only place where you'll feel the impact of higher energy prices. As energy-related transportation costs increase, those increases will trickle right down to the cash register. And it's not just the price of all that's a problem. Russia and Ukraine account for 30% of the world's wheat supply and other important commodities that serve as the building blocks to a lot of the things that we buy on a daily basis. As those supplies get cut, prices will increase, which will increase the cost of the final product. Unless this de-escalates quickly, we could see inflation headed to 10% or more. Now, this is where I'd like to hear from you. Do you think this will continue, or will Putin be satisfied to stop in Ukraine? So how does this increased inflation threaten the Social Security system? Well, this goes back to how Social Security is funded. The main source of revenue for Social Security is through payroll taxes. For several years, there were more dollars coming in that were being paid out. The excess went to the trust fund. This is like the savings account for the Social Security Administration. Now there isn't enough coming in through payroll taxes, and a part of every payment is coming from the trust fund. But this trust fund balance is only projected to last until about 2033. At that point, payroll taxes alone will only cover about 75% of the amount needed to pay benefits. So unless something changes in the law, there will be a mandatory benefit cut. The problem that higher inflation causes is that with higher inflation comes higher benefit payments. As many of you know, the annual adjustments to the cost of living increase is based on price inflation. Specifically, it's based on a measurement known as the CPIW. So if inflation moves up, benefits do as well. And if benefits increase, the rate of withdrawals from the trust fund increase, and thus it runs out of money faster than projected. Keep in mind that the forecasted date of depletion is 2033, but that's based on the Social Security trustees' long-term inflation assumption of 2.4%. And as we all know, the annual rate of inflation reported just in October of 2021 was more than twice that. And since then, inflation has gone up even further, and that was before Russia invaded Ukraine. Those reports haven't even started to come out yet. So what should you do? Well, if you are already on Social Security or close to being eligible, I don't think you're going to have an issue. The pandemic has taught me to never say never, but I don't think there's a very high probability of a large voting block having a reduction in benefit payments. It's just too risky for the politicians. 
Most likely, though, there will be a change which cuts benefits years down the road to people who are not yet eligible. This may come from a means test or something as simple as a change to the benefits formula to make it less favorable to people who are higher income. Whatever happens, if you are under 55, I'd start thinking about ways to sustain your retirement income if your future benefit payments aren't as generous as today's estimates. One thing I can tell you is that as things change, I'll be here letting you know about them. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do that now and be sure to hit the notifications bell too. Thanks for watching.